Hey everyone, Gabriel with Gabriel's Hobby Studio here. Today I'll be taking it back to an oldie but goodie creation, so to speak. If you enjoyed this video and any of my other videos, then make sure that you like and subscribe. Every little bit goes a long way, and I can see how many of you are not subscribed. Close to 80% of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. Come on, it's easy. Just hit that little red button. It doesn't hurt. And to the 20% of you who are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. There's not a lot of us right now, but every single one of you means a lot to me. So I'm going to make a refinery, which could also be used as a grouping of silos or oil tanks, depending on the orientation that you put the cans in. The only thing that I have access to are regular sized soda cans, which are less than ideal for this because we're so used to seeing that shape. It's something that's instantly recognizable as what it is and a lot, and I mean a lot has to be done to it in order to make it not look like a pop can with stuff glued onto it. First step for me is I'm going to be sanding the outside of all of these just to make sure that the surface is roughened up, and that way it'll make it easier to glue and paint later. Now, you don't have to do this, but I would rather do it now and save me a lot of work later. After everything is sanded, uh, let's go ahead and start working on building onto the cylinder shapes of these cans and break up that uniform shape a little bit. One of the oldest tricks for this is to use some cardboard or a serial card and cutting strips that will go around the outside to break up the flatness of the shape or in the case of the food cans hide the rib on the side of the can. Right now you can see me running this uh, strip through my hand while bending the cardboard a little bit. All that this does is it helps to encourage the cardboard to start curling, and it'll make it much easier to start gluing it and wrapping it around a cylindrical shape. With it already having a tendency to curl on itself, it's going to fight against the glue less while I'm waiting for the glue to set up. This technique that I'll be using to put bands of cereal card around the cans, you're gonna see me doing at several points. The first one is going to have the bands and it's just going to break up the texture. I'm going to put one at the top of it and kind of hide that shape a little bit and one at the bottom. Before I commit to anything going on top of this, I'm going to go ahead and apply glue to the points where the band is going to reach and between the can and the card. By using a thin line of hot glue in this fashion, you can create the texture of a weld bead. I've done this a couple of times on a couple of other projects, my uh, Colt Alter, and I've also done that on the scratch-built orc truck. For the first can though, I'm going to go ahead and use a couple of these different sized caps and some electrical components. I don't know why, but I put a little piece of hair curler on here. I don't know what it's supposed to be. I just thought that the spines on it would look nice and that it sitting there would look okay. And between the cap and the can, I'm going to do that same uh, hot glue weld bead technique. Can number two. I'm cutting up a piece of foam core to fit inside of the foot of the can. On top of the foam core, I'm adding some plastic mesh. This is also called cross-stitching canvas, plastic canvas, or granny grating. You can get this from any kind of hobby place that deals with a lot of sewing and fabrics. The remnants of that same hair curler that I put on the other one, I'm going to cut that one up and use that as a railing for the top of this little flat structure. And I'm going to be breaking up the cylinder shape the same way with banding. However, I am going to let the glue cure and then I'm going to peel off as much of that banding as I can. So that way there's some bits of ripped paper still stuck to it. There's some glue adhesive on the surface. The glue adhesive doesn't show up too much when I come to do the painting later, but the paper, that sure leaves a texture on there. For the third can, I'm going to jump into using one of these taller cans. The first thing I'm going to do is apply that banding. I'm just going to stop repeating that and just assume that I'm putting banding on everything. But I'm going to use some corrugated cardboard to add a different profile than the other kinds of banding. I'm also going to take this uh, twisted plastic. It's supposed to mimic twisted wires for hanging pots. I inserted this into the folds of the corrugation. 
With this one being taller than the other two I've done so far, I figured at this point it would be a good idea to start incorporating ways of accessing the top. Put a ladder on it. So instead of actually making a ladder, I just thought I'd use the half circle pieces for the hair curlers as an indication of where the ladder would be. For the top of this one, I decided that a grinder needed to be installed in this structure. It doesn't always have to be a grinder, but I figured I could at least make it look like it so I could say this is some kind of processing plant. And that's where the raw material gets thrown in to get ground up before it moves into the other silos. To make that grinder look, I put plastic rings down, the ones that are normally the locking pieces on plastic bottles. You know, when you open a plastic bottle and you hear that ripping sound, that's the plastic locking ring. With three of those cans done, I thought this thing needs some kind of outbuilding or structure to go along with it, so it's not just silos. This little outbuilding, I wanted to have it so it could slide up against the refinery and it could kind of lock into any orientation. How I tackled that was tracing the outside profile of some of these cans, and I figured that I better do this now before I add too much to the remaining cans and don't have any viable surface to make a tracing of the profile. For the next one, I wanted it to be fairly limited on what was happening on the outside of it, and I had tons of these Monopoly pieces that I sourced from a local thrift store. I figured those would work as ports for hoses or pipes on the outside of the structure, leading to other silos or out to a feed. To work as a guide to give me some kind of uniform layout, I used the Nutrition Facts area because it has a bunch of straight lines on it and I could use those to make sure that the pieces are lined up and that they are perpendicular to each other. I didn't want to add too much to this one though because I wanted there to be more room for an additional texture I haven't used yet and room for pipes and hoses. So the texture that I'm going to be putting on here is a window screen mesh. It's not going to do too terribly much for the overall paint job, however, all of those ridges will take a dry brushing phenomenally. For the sixth can in this arrangement, I decided to actually make a ladder this time. One not represented by the curved parts of the hair curler though, like I did before, but a proper ladder. So because I intend for some amount of movement on top of this, whether or not it's actually going to be used or, you know, whatever denizens operate this thing just need to get up here and then made their own makeshift structure, I figured some walkways that connected these different silos would be in order. For this, I just took some of the plastic canvas and popsicle stick. Given the nature of what it is that I'm building, I'm just going to keep the paint job relatively simple. I'm going to use this uh, brown red color as my base coat and primer and begin dry brushing on several different colors of metallics, starting with silver and then mixing in some bronze and copper. For the outbuilding in particular, I wanted to add some very dark recesses in between the corrugation. To achieve this, I used some of the DIY contrast medium that I showed you how to make in that video right up at the top right of the screen now. I just added some black ink to it. That's going to fill in all these crevices. It's also going to darken down the metallic shine a little bit as well. When it dries, it won't be super dark, but it'll be dark enough to distinguish between the valleys and the mountains and make the building look a little more dirty, kind of like it has a little bit more oil on it. The base coat for this three-part section is a custardy yellow or yellowy custard. Is custard yellow? I'm going to use that for the smooth texture of the cans, and that's going to influence where exactly my other colors are going to go. So I'm going to paint this on the smooth areas. On the other three, I wanted to shake it up a little bit, and instead of a yellowy custard, I wanted more of an eggshell color, following the same restriction as before by only painting it on the smooth areas and not the textured areas. How about a little graffiti? I mean, it fits perfectly with Necromunda, so for each of my gangs, I'm gonna add a piece of graffiti to the terrain. First of all, we'll do my Goliath Gangers, a band of beastmen inside the House of Goliath. Then it's time to add the Cult of Malice, a grouping of Chaos Cultists who worship the fifth god, Malice. How about a Chaos Star hidden in the back for anyone who looks at this up close? 
So I think this turned out really well. It's a modular piece of kit that I think is going to make its way into a fair amount of tables that I play on. And it separates into three different pieces that can then be oriented in a variety of different ways, either uh, together in some fashion or completely separated, strewn across the battlefield. I'll just run through some of those variations now. The really nice thing about the outbuilding is because I followed the curvature of the two cans next to each other, it can slot into any space where two cans are next to each other. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so that way you can be notified when I post new videos. You can also join me on Facebook and Instagram, links are in the description below. As always, have fun, be creative, and happy hobbying.